They're set to kick off the second half of the 2011 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series racing season here at Auto Clearing Motor Speedway. Get ready, the action is about to heat up in the Paris of the Prairies. Saskatchewan's finest short track plays host to the best racing series in the country. 21 NASCAR late models are ready to roar through the prairie night. All eyes are on Scott Steckley. Speed and consistency is the name of the game, and the 2008 champion is number one in all brackets. Saskatoon loves NASCAR. This is race number seven of the 2011 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series on TSN. We've made our mid-season stop at the Auto Clearing Motor Speedway as Bayer Crop Science presents the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Adam Ross along with veteran stock car racer Billy Revs Jr. and Todd Lewis's trackside. Billy, year after year, this perfect little track located just on the outskirts of Saskatoon is packed full of NASCAR fans. That's right, Adam. The parking lot is overflowing with pickup trucks. They love their racing here in the prairies, and as they should. What a great two-groove racetrack they've built here. You know, this race has been the talk of the town all week long. Speaking of talk of the town, the 22 with Scott Stackley is the mayor of the Castrol Points Chase. He has a 97-point lead over 2010 champion DJ Kennington at the midway point. Well, he has been consistent in having two wins and four top five finishes. That's how you get to the top of the points. You know, Billy, we're here in Rough Rider country, and in our last event, J.R. Fitzpatrick and the O2 of Kerry Mix went into full tackle mode. They've got a heated rivalry, and it might carry over to tonight's race. With that, let's send it down trackside to Todd Lewis with our Keystone Light pole sitter. Thanks, guys. Earlier today in qualifying, it was the second last car that had the quickest time, the familiar number 17 Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. He posted a new track record with a time of 14.668 seconds. It's a speed of 81.7 miles per hour, and as mentioned, it's a new track record. DJ Kennington will start from the pole position. He's busy signing autographs now, and DJ, this is a good opportunity for you. Starting on the pole, you've got the leader in points, Scott Steckley, starting pretty far back in the field here tonight. Yeah, it's great for the Castrol Edge Mahindra Tractor Dodge. I mean, uh, the guys have worked hard, and I think the drivers let them down two or three races this year on not getting the pole. But uh, it's been good for us. The car's been great all day, and uh, I'll guarantee you, Steckley will be here in no time. But uh, we're going to race some hard tonight and try to get this win. Well, DJ Kennington hoping to make it back-to-back -back wins. And, fellas, I can update you as well that the 0-2 driver, Kerry Mix, and the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick, uh, following our last event at Verdon at Motoplex Speedway, had a little talk with the NASCAR officials. They've both been told, look, no funny business or there will be severe penalties. We'll get the action going here from Auto Clearing Motor Speedway when we return. The seventh race of the 2011 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series on TSN is brought to you by Mopar Authentic Performance. By Castrol Edge, our best Castrol ever. And by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. The crews are ready and the drivers are strapped in. Let's send it down to Devin Grenier for the command. NASCAR late models, fire to life. We're gonna call it Prairie Thunder. You know, Billy, this was the tightest field we've had all year long through practice, through qualifying earlier on today. Every car, every driver seems to feel comfortable on a track like this. Why is that? Well, it's so new, Adam. There's no bumps, really racy two-groove racetrack. And you know what? Since the very first time we come here, everybody loved this little speed plan. Lots of onboards this evening. On board with the Leland number nine of Mark Dilley. There's a look at Nathan Wink giving the thumbs up. He's hoping for a good run. A&W on board with Jason White. We'll ride with him tonight. How about Dan Shirley back at the racetrack, Billy? You've run some laps with him. Absolutely, back in the Cascar days. Darn good Western competitor. Let's take you through the Fuel Doctor starting grid. Of course, DJ Kennington on the pole with Pete Shepard, oval track specialist alongside. Former teammates, J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 84, Don Thompson Jr. in the Farmers Feed Family's 8. Third row as Kerry Mix with the Nathan Wink in the Midwest Combustion Chevy. Ron Beauchamp Jr. brings the Mopar Mobile 160 alongside Jason White in the number 21. Fifth row as Jason Hathaway with Dan Shirley that we talked about. 
Row number six sees Scott Steck, the surprisingly poor qualifying effort for the Canadian Tire Dodge, alongside with Mark Dilling. Dexter Stacey in the 55 will start on the inside of row seven with Jared Whistle on the outside. Riley Siebert, 19-year-old from British Columbia, makes his series debut alongside Isabel Tremblay. Pierre Bork and Nick Jewell also making his debut in that 51 car. He might be one to watch. And in the 10th row, James Van Domslar and Shannon Harding will go side by side to the green. And rounding out the field, young Noel Dowler in the 5 car. Well, Noel Dowler getting his feet wet on these ovals. He's doing a good job. He stays out of trouble. He's learning how to drive these big, heavy stock cars. Now we'll take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. We talked about it's a great one-third mile racetrack. We're going to go 250 laps here tonight. Now, Adam, here's the trick. The teams are only allowed six new Goodyears at this racetrack. Four go on to qualify, one two-tire pit stop. Only two tires to take on and 250 laps to do it. Let's send it down to Todd Trackside. Guys, as we're watching from the onboard cameras tonight, we'll see a lot of the yellow rookie strike. There are seven of them in the field. Three Western drivers are the fresh meat in the field, making their first ever NASCAR Canadian Tire Series start. 46 of Dan Shirley. He starts in the eighth spot. He's a former Western champion. Also, the number 69 we've seen before with Trevor Siebert. His son, Riley, is making his first ever start. And Nick Jewell, who's running here at Saskatoon, making his first start, said the car's not bad, a little off stagger, and he hopes to run more races next year. You know, Nick comes from the Paw Manitoba, guys, but he's got a lot of laps on this racetrack behind the wheel of a late model. It'll be fun to see how he does in a different style race car, Billy. Well, also, that's that's a proven race car. It's one of the old Scott Steckley oval cars, so it has a lot of knowledge in itself. They definitely know how to turn left, and we're about to get going with a lot of left-hand turns. DJ Kennington on the inside, Pete Shepard on the outside, Leo Grenier from Bayer Crop Science waves a green flag, and we're off. What a start for DJ Kennington. He's cleared the Pete Shepard machine, and now J.R. Fitzpatrick looks to do the same in that 84. J.R. got a great drive off a of turn two. He's putting the pressure on the seven. He's trying to get the spot, but he just can't quite get him cleared just yet. Look through that windshield at the hands of J.R. Fitzpatrick. They go to the same shot. You can hear the spotters. They're working hard already, trying to get their drivers to the front. But J.R. Fitzpatrick got his hands full of steering wheel as we see Donnie Thompson mixing it up there with Pete Shepard. Don Thompson Jr. got a little bit too loose on corner entry, got up into the side of the seven, but he's doing a great job staying off him. These cars make a fantastic sound around this racetrack. Look at Jason White. He's looking racy early on, trying to get Kerry Mix on the outside. That's a challenge at any racetrack. Well, early on, it's a little slick out there, but they will make that groove work as we put some eye laps on the board. This is a battle just inside the top 10 with Nathan Wake. He's looking for a big run tonight, Billy. He's turned a lot of laps here. They ran at BC last weekend, and they're hoping for a great finish tonight. There's a look at the 46 of Shirley. Not looking like he's been out of a race car for very long at all as he works the outside of the 60. No, when you can lead around the track with Scott Steckley on your heels there, you're doing okay. And I think Dan Shirley is going to do just fine as he races for the 10th position. And we're on board with Jason Hathaway in that snap-on dodge. A lot of side-by-side -side action throughout this whole field. 21 great-looking late models racing hard here in Saskatoon. We knew that was going to be the case. This track, like we said, really wide, really racy. They can run side by side and really not come that close to the car beside them. Nathan Wink doing a good job in that 48 car. That yellow stripe in the back only means a rookie to this series. He's got lots of experience in all different kinds of motorsports. Well, exactly. They have to run that stripe because it's the rule that some of these rookies do have an awful lot of laps. As the field races down into turn three, still two by two, just the way they started. As we go on board with Mark Dilley in that Leland Ring number nine, as he runs in the 12th position. Well, we also got to give a big shout out to Byron Nelson from Leland. I think he brought half the town of Wadena, Saskatchewan with him. They're all sitting over there in turn four, watching their boy give it a good ride. Well, there's been a lot of noise coming from down there. I think they're having a little bit of fun, Billy. That's what this is all about. Trouble in turn two. Beauchamp and Jason White get together. Nathan Wake collected. Scott Steckley just through the middle. Yellow flag is out for the first time here at Auto Clearing. Wow, a couple cars. Let's get a look at the replay here. 
Down into turn one. The 60 gets the spot of the 21. The 21 just comes down on him, and around he goes. Beauchamp did a great job not getting collected any harder than that. We're down into the pits. Nathan Wink comes for some attention from his crew. A car there behind him as well. They're going to work on the right-hand side. But here's the story. As Scott Stackley into the Canadian tire pit, there's a lot more damage on that car than I thought he would have, Billy. Well, here's the next replay. I thought he got through clean, but oh, he gets in the back of the three car really hard when the three checks up for the 60 and the 48. I'll tell you what, that's a nice save by Jason Hathaway after getting jacked up into the air like that. Don't go away. We got lots more action coming to you. DJ Kennington's your leader. Welcome back to the Velocity Prairie Thunder 250 here at Saskatoon. We're set for our first restart. DJ Kennington paces the field on the inside with J.R. Fitzpatrick now running second. Side by side up through the gearbox, heading for turn one. Fitzpatrick getting a nose out front. He'll get a good drive off the top. And Billy, he might have got a bit too good of a drive there. NASCAR rule says the leader has to lead the way to the start finish line. If the outside front row gets there, he has to give the spot back. And J.R. Fitzpatrick just pulled in front of race leader DJ Kennington. Now we'll wait to see what the ruling is from NASCAR. But right now, J.R. Fitzpatrick shows you the lead over the 17 of DJ Kennington. Reports we're getting after a bit of contact between Shepard and Thompson is that there will be a black flag to J.R. Fitzpatrick. He's going to get a drive-through penalty and at pit road speed limit of 30 miles an hour, Billy, he will probably go a lap down. Well, J.R. gave the spot back, but too little, too late. He has to serve the penalty under the black flag now. That's going to be costly here in Saskatoon. Wow, look at him come across Kerry Mix in the 0-2. These two have met before on this Western trip, so that could have been a whole lot worse. So here's the restart right here. Coming to the green flag, the 84 definitely beats him by, by the line by at least two feet. And you know, Billy, if people think it's nitpicking, at the driver's meeting every week, they stress the fact the pole sitter earns the right to cross the line first. And if you're not sure as a driver, you've got to give that spot back or this could be the penalty. Absolutely. Fair, fair, fair warning. They know all about the rules when it comes to the flags. There we see teammates Don Thompson Jr. with Jason Hathaway. Hathaway applying the pressure, but Don Thompson Jr. just about unflappable as the right side door coming a little bit loose. And with Scott Steckley back on the racetrack, let's go down to pit road with Todd Lewis. Guys, this looks to be the problem with the 22 car. They're getting a new radiator ready. Scott Steckley, you saw the body damage from that earlier contact. It looks like they're not getting enough air into that radiator. They've got a leak. They're going to have to replace it. This is going to make a big shuffle in the championship. Well, coming into today's race, Scott Steckley had a 97-point lead, Billy. The difference between first and 21st in this series is about... 100 points. So DJ Kennington could come out with the points lead if everything went perfectly, but regardless, the team's got to be quietly celebrating. Well, Adam, right now, we still got a lot of racing to do, not a lot of celebrating, but somebody needs to be on the radio to DJ tell him, look, the 22's having some trouble. Look at the big picture. But right now, DJ Kennington, he's got the dominant race car. The only thing he's thinking about is logging laps and looking at nobody through the window. Well, he's got the best picture. Let's have a look here. Mark Dilley racing behind Dan Shirley and Jason White here. DJ Kennington has the best view. There's nothing in front of him but racetrack as the Steckley crew is back on pit road. A lot of work to be done there. It's, you got the oil cooler, you got the you got the coolant lines, then you got to purge the air out of the motor. A lot of work to be done by the 22 car. A costly problem here in Saskatoon. Shannon Harding trying to stay out of the way of the leaders in that 36 car. A little bit of contact, but Shannon Harding and that team, they do get a bit better week in and week out, but she's pretty frustrated, Billy. She wants to run better. There's a great camera shot right there, looking right into Pete Shepard's eyes. You can see his hands on the steering wheel, super focused on what he's doing. What a great little driver. A little bit of squinting there as well. That's not a very dark shield on Shepard's mask. What do you think the sun will do to these drivers, Billy? Is it a problem here? Well, the preparation is this. Some guys will wear sunglasses underneath the clear shield, but as the sun goes down, we'll get like 20 or 30 laps up right into the driver's eyes. It's tough with perfect visibility as we look at another battle. Dan Shirley and Mark Dilley duking it out for sixth on the racetrack. Mark Dilley running right around the yellow line on the bottom. That's where you want your car to be its best. As wow, look at the steam out of the engine of the 22 as they've got that fresh radiator right there. We can see it, and it is a lengthy process to get that installed. Well, it's not, it's, it's not an easy job. 